Hey guys, welcome back to another uh, home safari here. I am Ryan and uh, we're here at the reptile house at the zoo. And you guys were just watching Hudo, our 18 year old uh, Komodo dragon being remotely fed, because we do everything remote nowadays, uh, with uh, chicks, his favorite food. So we feed Hudo a little different than we used to, uh, because if you guys aren't aware, Hudo recently had double cataract eye surgery. Um, which isn't very typical in Komodo dragons. Uh, in fact, I think there's only a handful of times in the history it's happened, maybe two or three times. Um, and the surgery actually went really, really well. But what happened was basically within a two week time frame, Huda developed a pretty strong cataract in each eye and essentially was a fully blind. Uh, he didn't react to any kind of movement. Uh, his behavior had significantly decreased. He was not active. Um, so we, we made the decision to, to go forward with the surgery, and the surgery was a very good success. Um, and it basically turned Hudo from being essentially fully blind uh, into a dragon who was farsighted, as it was explained to me. So usually when there's cataract surgery, you move the cataracts and then you put synthetic lenses in. Um, for humans and even dogs, they have what's called a refractive index on these lenses uh, that makes up for the way your, your eye moves. It helps you focus. Well, we, for whatever reason, I guess we don't know the refractive index for a Komodo dragon eyes lens. Uh, so we didn't have those replacements. So that eventually, that essentially has made Huda farsighted. So he sees way better than he, than he did with uh, full cataracts, but it's still not exactly how it used to be. Um, so we just pay a lot more attention to him and make sure uh, he's getting the food he needs. And as you can see now, his, his sense of smell has not gone anywhere. Uh, his sense of, so he smells all these chicks, it's in the air, um, which might sound bad because we have little tiny zebra finches that we put in here with him, but um, they're running around, they're flying around doing well, uh, and they kind of like each other, you know? It's enrichment for a dragon. The, the zebra finches add some sight, some movement, some sound, um, and the dragon provides that for them as well. It's a really cool relationship they have in here, but we're really, really happy with Hudo's progress. He's been great, he's eating well, He's active, uh, he's interested in things going on around him, and um, yeah, I mean, you never know how a reptile is going to handle being anesthetized and going through a surgery, but top-notch uh, surgeons, top-notch vet team, and the reptile team staff came together really, really well, supported by the Cincinnati Zoo, and Hudo has had a great recovery. Um, otherwise, you know, we don't know what his quality of life may have been, but now it's going to continue to be great here at the zoo. So. Um, that's our little update on Hudo, and honestly, if you guys have any questions you wanted to ask about uh, Hudo, now would be a good time, and I'd love to answer those for you. Um, Sarah has one. She wants to know if he's venomous, or are there just a ton of bacteria in his mouth that lead to infections when they get a bite? Sarah, good question. They are technically venomous, uh, but I would not be surprised if there was a boatload of bacteria. I mean, if I got bitten, I wouldn't be just worried about a venomous bite. I'd be worried about, look at his mouth. I mean, he's going to start drooling in a second. So I think there are both components, but it used to be, uh, Nabi believed that they were venomous, but recent research has uh, pretty much shown that they, they are a venomous species of lizard. Louisa wants to know how fast they can be. They can be faster than you think. And uh, that may sound like uh, an easy answer, but when you're in with a Komodo dragon and they move a little faster than you thought, it seems like a million miles an hour sometimes. But um, he's a little more cautious now, and he doesn't move as fast, basically because you know, he doesn't see as well as he used to. Um, so he's a lot more deliberate with his movements. But I don't know the actual speed of a dragon, but they can move. They can move. They are not a slow animal when they don't want to be. Um, two people, Jonathan and Lorianne, would like to know how old he is. Jonathan and Lorianne? Mm. He just turned 18 uh, in January. So, and he is the great grandson of uh, the Cincinnati Zoo's famous uh, dragon, Naga, who is the father of a lot of Komodo dragon offspring in the United States and in zoos. Uh, Naga, we, the Cincinnati Zoo, I believe, was the first or second place outside of their home range in Indonesia to reproduce dragons. So we have a strong history of Komodo dragons, um, and we love our boy Hudo here, our 18-year-old boy. He's ready to vote. Carrie wants to know how big Komodo dragons get. That is a good question, Carrie. Um, 
Hudo here is an adult male. Like I said, he's 18 years old. He is uh, probably about midlife. Uh, he should live to over 30 years in my book and hopefully a lot longer. Um, but he weighs just over 100 pounds. We believe he's got good body conformation. He's not too heavy. Um, but when they first started coming into zoos and collections, um, it was like you fed your dragon a lot and you saw some really, really big dragons, but they weren't really the healthiest of dragons. And uh, m many, most zoos nowadays pay a lot of attention to exactly how much they're feeding and what they're feeding. In fact, I can tell you that uh, John, their primary keeper, worked for the last year to develop the exact amount he wanted to feed to Hudo. And Hudo eats about 78% to 82% of his body weight per year. Which does, it sounds, it may sound like a lot, but it's really not. So uh, reptiles tend to not have to eat as much as a lot of other animals. Sydney wants to know why they have long tongues. That big long tongue is, here's a big fancy word for you, bifurcated, which means it's split. It's a forked tongue, just like a snake. And what that animal is doing is it's sticking its tongue out so that it can pick up scent particles. And then it'll take those scent particles and touch them to its Jacobson's organ, which we also have a Jacobson's organ. Uh, and then it'll determine, or it'll kind of analyze those scents and tell them what he smells. Um, basically, what's, uh, someone kind of said this to me once, how it, you kind of smell that way. And they said uh, you can kind of help them tell what, what direction the smell is coming from by using an analogy to your ears. Like when you're listening to things, you, both of your ears are picking up sound. But you can tell like which direction it's coming from and that's kind of how they use their forked tongue to tell where that scent is coming from and where they should be going to follow it. Jen wants to know what is his favorite food? His favorite well he really likes furs but um, per his uh, primary keeper John it's any stinky food. So things like fish, squid, um, birds have a strong smell. He really, really likes those types of things. Morgan wants to know where he would live in the wild. Well, he would live in Indonesia in the Komodo Island chain. It's a national park now. And there's a lot of, well, there's not a lot of them, but there's, there's some out there. Nice, warm, humid, beautiful looking land. Um, Liam would like to know what the, what's the strangest thing that they eat? Liam, what's the strangest thing that they eat? I don't know if you could really pinpoint it down. We feed them a little bit of everything. Uh, because we don't pinpoint exactly what they would eat in their natural environment, we try to offer everything. Um, he eats things from like chickens to quail, mice and rats, uh, herring, smelt, capelin, squid. Um, we've even fed them um, uh, tiny lizards and... He's got pellets that he eats um, that are kind of a formulated treat for him. Uh, shoot, what else? We've, we've made uh, jello molds out of like um, blood from other animals that have been left over from the food that we fed out. I mean, he, I haven't seen him refuse anything. So if any of that's weird, um, hopefully I answered your question. Miss um, Locke's fourth grade class wants to know how long they live. Miss Locke's fourth grade class. Hi, uh, they live, Hudo is 18 years old now, and you know, we hope to see this guy live uh, at least 30 years. Uh, and there have been some isolated reports uh, that say they live over 50 in the wild. Um, but I think the average in, in a lot of zoos is 25 to 30, and uh, I think Hudo is gonna be well over 30 by, when it's all said and done. Um, Sylvia wants to know, are they smart? I think Komodo dragons are very smart. Now you have to say that comparatively. Um, you know, is he as smart as me? Probably. Um, <laughs> uh, but they are, they're very smart. They're problem solving. Um, Komodo dragons are great at doing different kinds of training and opera conditioning. Um, and that's why we do things like, if you notice his exhibit is not like some bear exhibit, he's got different substrates different types of dirt to walk on. There's rocks, there's live plants, you know, different um, rocks to step on. It's all part of like keeping him fit and kind of giving him something to do. And that's one of the reasons we put live birds in there. Um, they don't mess with him, he doesn't mess with them. And that's kind of keeps the wheels turning. So 
If you have a, an animal that's intelligent like a Komodo dragon and you don't enrich his life and provide a good quality of life, you're really doing a disservice. Um, we have no uh, paucity of that here. We, we dig it. All right, well guys, thank you so much for uh, checking in on us for another home safari. I hope, you, I hope I answered your questions. It was great to see everybody again. Um, and until next time, we'll see you. And hey, Peter. Hi, Emmy.